Welcome to Mastering Solutions. In this general problem, they tell us that in this 5,000 meter race, the athletes run 12 and a half laps and each lap is 400 meters. Kara runs the race at a constant speed and finishes in 17 and a half minutes. Kara runs the race at a constant pace and finishes in 17 and a half minutes. And Hannah runs the race in a blistering 15.3 minutes. So fast that she actually passes Kara during the race. And how many laps has Hannah run when she finally passes Kara. These questions can be challenging for a lot of students because they don't even know where to begin on the problem. So if you think about it, math in these kinds of questions is just a simplified representation of all the words. So we have the distance the delta x that Hannah has run. When someone passes someone, they've run a whole lap more than them and caught up to them. So we need to have the distance that Hannah has run is the exact same distance for delta x that Kara has run plus 400 meters. So this mathematical equation is saying the exact same thing that this paragraph says. So now what we need to do is we need to figure out other equations to plug into here that will give us the numbers. So we know that the velocity equation is the same as the change in the distance over the change in time. Let's change this so that we're isolating delta x. We'll multiply both sides of the equation by delta t. So the change in the distance is equal to the velocity times the change in time. So the delta x for Kara is going to be the velocity that Kara ran times the time. The change in the x for Hannah is the same thing as the velocity that Hannah ran times the time. So now we can plug these up here. And let's write that out. So we have the velocity of Hannah times the time. And then we have the velocity of Kara times the time plus 400 meters. So now our goal is to isolate the time because that's what we need from this equation is the time when Hannah passes Kara. And then we'll use that and work backwards to figure out how many laps Hannah has ran at that point. So if we isolate T, let's first move over this. So we have 400 meters is equal to velocity of Hannah times time minus the velocity of Kara times time. And now we want to factor out time from this. So we have 400 meters is equal to time times the velocity of Hannah minus the velocity of Kara. And now we can divide both sides of the equation by VH minus VK, which we'll get rid of it here. And time will be equal to 400 meters divided by the velocity of Hannah minus the velocity of Kara. All right, so we have done a lot of work and we've made a really good head start on this. They're making the question one step more difficult for us because they don't tell us their velocities at all. So we need to figure out what the velocity is for Hannah and what the velocity is for Kara. And we need it in standard units, but they don't tell us that. They tell us that there are 12 and a half laps and each lap is 400 meters. So if we multiply these two together, it will give us the total number of laps. And we want to divide that by the time. And so if you see what I'm doing here, it's just the velocity equation again. Velocity is a change in the distance over a change in time. For Hannah, she ran it in a blistering 15.3 minutes. So to convert this into standard units, we'll be using dimensional analysis. 12 and a half times 1400, we're in meters. So that's already on top and in the units that we need. So we just need to convert this into seconds. So we want them to be opposite so that they'll cancel. So we'll have the minutes gone. And then on the bottom here, we want it in seconds. So meters will be on the top, seconds will be on the bottom. And in one minute, there's of course 60 seconds. So now if it's on the top, we multiply it. If it's on the bottom, we divide. So we have 12.5 times 400 divided by 15.3 divided by 60 tells us that Hannah ran this, the race in 5.45 meters per second. So Hannah's speed was 5.45 meters per second. 
And now we need to do the exact same thing for Kara. We know there's 12 and a half laps times 400 meters. And then we'll divide that by her time, which was 17 and a half minutes. And same thing, one minute is 60 seconds. So now we'll be in meters per second. And we have 12 and a half times 400 divided by 17 and a half minutes divided by 60 to put us into meters per second. And her speed was 4.8 or uh, let's leave it at 4.76, just so it's um, we're not going to get any rounding errors. So 4.76 meters per second. So now we have both of their speeds, and we can bring them back up here into the equation to figure out what the time was when Hannah lapped Kara. So the time will be equal to 400 meters divided by 5.45 minus 4.76 meters per second, of course, meters per second. 400 divided by 5.45 minus 4.76 gives us 579. So we can round that to 580 seconds. So time is 580 seconds. And let's put that into laps now. So this question really is just tons of conversion. And I know it can be confusing, but we're almost there. So we need to use the velocity equation one more time. And the distance, this is for how many laps has Hannah gone. This is how many laps has Hannah gone when she passes Kara. So we'll be using the information for Hannah. So the distance that she has run is 5.45 meters per second times her time, which is 580 seconds is the point when she laps her. So 5.45 times 580, we have 3161. And what is that? That is meters. So it was 3161 meters. Each lap is 400 meters. So finally, if we take that and divide it by 400, we have 7.9 laps. So this is how far Hannah has run when she passes Kara in the race.